Greensboro School Committee meeting. Uh, Reminder: this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Uh, I will call the meeting to order at this time. This is our annual reorganization meeting. Uh, actually, at this time, we'll begin with introductions to my left. Uh, my name is Barry Teague, student representative. Jeff Bow. Dustin Puma. Mike Woodlock, assistant superintendent. Mike Planning and superintendent. Becky Stanton. Anthony Tenerell. Ryan McMahon. Daniela Thanis. Rob Mullen. Good evening, Joe Lucina, business administrator. Staff for Pledge of Allegiance, please. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So our first uh, item of business is to seek election of chair. I will look for a, nom a request for a nominee, nominee for the chair position. Uh, if, more, if there are more than one nominee forthcoming, the nominee who receives the greatest number of votes will serve as the chair. In the event of a tie, the process will repeat itself until a chair is elected. So at this time, I will obtain a motion for nomination for a chair. I'd like to nominate Tony for chair. I'll second. We have a motion as second. Discussion? Any other nominations? All right, at this time we'll seek a vote. All in favor of Mr. Tinello serving as chair? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Carry 7-0-0. Mr. Chair, the meeting is yours. No. Thankfully. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I like doing that part. It's awful. Uh, thank you, everyone, for having the faith in me and electing me as chair. Um, so my first order of business is to elect the vice chair. Um, so I will seek nominations for vice chair. I'd like to nominate Danielle Athanas for vice chair. Are there any other nominees? Any discussion? All those in favor of Danielle? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? That carries 700. Election of recording secretary. I'd like to nominate Ryan McMahon. Second. Any discussion? Any other nominees? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? That carries seven zero zero. Thank you guys. No, so we stay right where we are tonight. All right. Yeah. Um, review of open meeting laws, email, telephone, correspondence. I think we can kind of cover this all together, can't we? We Just do. Uh, Mr. Chair, the, the, the open meeting law uh, by MGL standards is in your drive. It's available for you. Uh, re reminders about email and telephone correspondence also in that folder. Additionally, in the open meeting law, we also have executive se session guidelines, what that uh, requirements are under master law for that. That's also in the open meeting law folder. And uh, also in this, we have the role of the school committee. That is your board governance, your roles and responsibilities, all the policies that are established are in the drive for your review. And also in the drive is item uh, 1G, which is uh, the subcommittee assignments. We have a description of all the subcommittee assignments in the, in the drive for your review. Uh, typically what we do at this meeting is we, we provide all the information to you to review. If you have questions, uh, feel free to send me an, e uh, an email. The other thing that we do at this meeting is I seek your request for two or three <coughs> subcommittee assignments. So I would ask, I, we don't have a meeting until August, but I'm afraid if we say the due date's in July, it's going to fall off everyone's radar. So is it reasonable to say by the next Friday, June 16th, that I receive the top two to three requests from every school committee member as to which subcommittee you want to choose to serve on? Mm -hmm. Typically, Mr. Chair, what I've done is put that list in order based on people's priorities and preferences, and we bring that to the August meeting. We have a vote then. Perfect. Approval of minutes from May 23rd, 2023, our school committee uh, minutes. I'll request a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Uh, carry 700. Citizens time? Seeing none. Correspondence? None at this time. Personnel, and because I will butcher each and every one of these names, Dr. Flanagan has been nice enough to read them all for me. <laughs> we have a ton of personnel. This is our end of the year meeting, so I will go through it for the record. It's all information only, but I'll go by each category. 
In terms of notification of resignations, we have Lawrence, Lauren Burns, BCBA, Hector Pena, second shift custodian at the high school, Brock, Brian Riley, our special education facilitator from TES, and Brock Riley, our TES PE teacher. <coughs> Those are all notification of resignations. Wish all of them the best uh, in their future endeavors. Notification of new hires, we've been busy. Stacy Aleka, THS math teacher, that name may sound familiar. Ms. Aleka left us for one year uh, and has decided to return to the Tingsville Public Schools, so we're very thankful, so outstanding math teacher. Uh, Megan Bacon, TES paraprofessional. Kristen Fearon, she'll be the new Tingsville uh, Elementary School Special Education Facilitator. Vonda Foster, uh, district-wide speech and language pathologist, primarily at the elementary school. Bradley Grolo, TMS THS TV media teacher. Fiona Johnson, TES paraprofessional. Siamara Niven, TMS THS administrative assistant. Sam Roy, district-wide BCBA. And Jessica Shepard will be our new TES physical education teacher. Staff attaining professional status. This means they've worked three years successfully in the district uh, and are licensed uh, and have been recommended by their principal to, uh, or their supervisor for professional status. Rachel Collins, Kayla O'Shea, and Barbara Zimmerman. Staff renewals with <coughs> non-professional status. These are staff members who have less than three years experience, uh, doing a great job, and we're bringing them all back. Kat Cooney, Danny Costigan, Janet Durkin, Jennifer Farnping, Laura Francis, Erica Guerreri, Evan Hermanson, Kari Jones, Hannah McDonald, Taylor Morash, Vincent Papa Giorgio, Aaron Rubito, Bethany Shudo, Christopher Shanahan, Nicole Stetson, Jason Stewart, and Cassidy Tyros. They will all be back. We also have two uh, non-renewals, Suzanne Gadman and Shauna LeMay. We also received just recently a notice of intent to retire in December. Uh, Mrs. Suzanne Dick from TMS English Teacher. And we have two other uh, employee moves. Hannah McDonald will be reassigned uh, from sixth grade classroom to computer teacher at TMS. And Rachel Leo has decided to rescind her uh, retirement letter and will now serve as the administrative assistant at the Tingsboro Elementary School. So that is all the personnel action that's taken place over the past month. Uh, it's been hectic and chaotic, and uh, I appreciate Mr. Messina staying on top of all of this for us. So that's where we are. Excellent. Thank you. Share the success. So we're wrapping up our final days of the year, and I think everyone's looking forward to this summer. Uh, so at the elementary school, TES hosted the Senior Walk last Friday. Third graders participated in the fourth annual Wax Museum uh, tour this year. After exploring several web websites describing famous people from the United States, students had to choose one, one to do their project on. Parents and guardians were invited to the Wax Museum on June 2nd. Uh, grade two performed uh, an a Aesop uh, venture. Ms. Gauthier led uh, students in a wonderful performance using well-known fables and songs that emphasize the importance of Stripe's cores, uh, core values. Field day is this week, uh, and uh, on Thursday, TES will hold their annual uh, end of the year barbecue. If the weather is not favorable, it can be moved indoors. Uh, finally, there are many uh, exciting events planned for uh, fifth graders over the next two weeks. Uh, yesterday, ex they uh, enjoyed games uh, <coughs> with knuckle bones and ice cream, uh, and a special thank you to the police department for uh, sponsoring the ice cream truck. Uh, at the middle school, it is currently Spirit Week uh, at the middle school. Uh, Monday was uh, Movie Star Day. To today is Beach and Hawaiian Day. Uh, tomorrow is Wicked Fancy Wednesday. Thursday is USA Day. Uh, Friday is uh, Soccer Mom and Barbecue Dad Day. Uh, students are wrapping up their final assignments for the year, and there will be field trips and a field day to wrap up the year. Uh, eighth graders have uh, multiple events to look forward to, uh, including the eighth grade dance, uh, the whale watch, and the moving on ceremony. For the high school, uh, obviously congratulations to the class of uh, 2023 on their gra graduation. Uh, athletics has begun uh, uh, postseason with the uh, girls tennis, softball, baseball, and girls and boys lacrosse, and track and field, all competing in the MIAA uh, state tournament. Good, lu good luck to all still competing. Uh, students in grades nine to 11 will be recognized at the Celebration of Excellence, which will take place next week during, uh, uh, during win. Uh, congratulations to the June students of the month. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced your names. Uh, Ava Anderson, Isabella Cesar, uh, Shea Clasby, and uh, Mia Sacco. Thank you. Excellent. Good job. Good. Yep. Subcommittee updates. We have none at this time. Um, one question I did have, Dr. Flanagan, on the subcommittees is we may have a need for a subcommittee. 
in the next couple of weeks? Is that true? Or will it be the committees as they are today? Yes, so uh, thank you, good point. We will keep the negotiation subcommittee intact if people are okay with that because we will begin negotiations within the next few weeks. Yes, thank you. Okay, I just wanna make sure. Unfinished <coughs> business? So, uh, Mr. Chair, we'll jump right into the slide deck. Just a reminder, upcoming meetings, uh, the 28th will be a new school building committee meeting. Uh, I don't know if we received uh, notification, I don't think we have, but the 14th school building committee meeting will be canceled. So the next one's gonna be on June 28th. Uh, then we'll have a July 19th school building committee meeting, and our next school committee meeting is August 1st. And then we'll get to August 2nd when we start kicking the year off. So we'll go right down to the MSBA update. Um, a lot of groundwork and site work is still going on with the uh, underground water line, uh, sewer connections, and things like that. So it still looks like a big uh, sandbox out there and trucks are moving sand around and, and, and do a lot of underground work at the time. I did provide some pictures so you can go. So we can go to the first picture, Mr. Woodlock. So as you know, the, the main entrance to, to TMS, the goal was they wanted to reconfigure that main entrance because they need more space to move out the Jersey barriers. So because that is a, an accessible ramp for us, we had to reconfigure that. So they had to take that ramp out. And if we go to the next picture, you can see what the new entrance to TMS looks like at this time. So it is a covered entrance, and that is an accessible entrance uh, for <coughs> wheelchairs and mobility issues uh, at this time. Generally speaking, um, we will continue to run both entrances at TMS uh, in, the, in, the, in the near future. It seems to be working well, uh, but we do have access now, and that's, that's the new look for uh, the TMS entrance with the Jersey barriers extended out. If we go to the next slide, you can see uh, this is what we talked about over the past month or so. You actually, as you drove in today, I'm sure you saw the work. Essentially, what's going on right now is they are putting in all the new piping and fittings for the new sewer line that's going to come directly off of the new building. So they need to prep all the underground work, site work now, so that it's an easy connection when the time uh, is appropriate. And this is actually the time to do it as we're going with the water line. So if we could just go one more slide. I mean, it, you all drove in tonight, you saw the, the activity that's out there. Again, they were able to do this and expedite this process a little bit because we surrendered 45 parking spots, but we had 72 parking passes graduate last Friday night. So uh, literally they were here Saturday morning, closing that lot off, doing the work uh, and getting it going. So uh, kudos to, to Fontaine uh, because they really are really working with us and, and they're really pushing this project along at a great pace. So, so that's really the MSBA update, update right now. Our OAC meetings continue to happen. The next big thing is, you know, they're talking by the end of June that we'll start to see footings in the ground for Building B. And they have the, they have the, the project broken up into Building A, B, and C. Building B would be the central office gym and cafeteria part of the new school. Building A is the one wing, the STEM wing, and a classroom wing. And building C are the two other classroom wings off of the main section. So. Building B footings will be in by the end of June is what they're talking right now. So, uh, so it's exciting. Um, a lot of trucks moving, a lot of dust in the air, but they're doing a good job of managing it. So that's, that's where we are. I anticipate the update will be pretty similar. Or, or, or the, actually, we don't have another meeting until August, so I imagine it'll be very different in August <laughs> when we come back. So, so that's where we are right now. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes. Um, I just had a question about um, the loss of the parking spaces and the upcoming eighth grade moving on ceremony. Are we anticipating any um, parking challenges? Uh, probably. I don't, probably be, it, won't, it won't be as bad as graduation. I think that's why Mr. Uh, Pollitt had to move the eighth grade moving on ceremony to the evening because with all the teachers in the parking lot, the whole parking lot during the day, it would be difficult. I think, honestly, I think we might be okay the more I think about that, um, given the fact that there won't be any high school, really, activities going on at all, so the entire high school parking lot will be open. We should be okay. Uh, I think we will, again, get the Tingsboro Police involved. They did a great job managing traffic and parking at graduation, and I can't imagine it's gonna be to that scale or scope, uh, so, so we should be okay. Thanks. And that ceremony is June 15th, I believe? Yep. Mm -hmm. 5 p.m. 5 p.m.? Teaching and learning, Mr. Woodlock. That's me. So, um, since we're we're very close to the end of the year, as we've done all year, we've been providing uh, updates on our SDI progress made uh, in each building. So tonight, I'm going to share with you not all of them because that would take quite a while. But if you want to know all of the updates on each and every key action and specific information, uh, that's included in the drive. So. 
uh, dive in if you like, but I'll give a couple of highlights um, district-wide and for each building. But what we've done uh, and what you'll see if, if you look into those is not only have we updated on what we've done this year, but we've already started talking about what do we do next? Do we build upon this or is this a completed item? So um, I should give a, just a little shout out to the building admin uh, at each of our buildings. And it, it's a really busy time of year and they did a really great job compiling all the information and evidence uh, to support the impact that they've had. So I'll start at TES. Uh, actually, I'll start district-wide because these, these are really um, uh, calibrated throughout the district. And so some of the big key actions uh, that have already happened is, as you've already heard, a large-scale rollout of MTSS and universal design and also uh, you know, a real high concentration on scaling uh, social-emotional practices. Um, what will be happening next year throughout is an introduction of our, our revised DCAP, our District Accommodation Plan. <clears throat> In addition to uh, scaled instructional leadership um, strategies for our administrators to collect data, um, scaffold for teachers, provide them professional development, and feedback throughout the year. Uh, at our elementary school, the really big key action that they accomplished this year, and it was a struggle because, uh, because of certain timings with grant funding, we had to really push it last year to, to get it in and begin it this year, but was an implementation of the new ELA curriculum. And it was a lot of work for these, for these teachers on top of everything else that they're doing. And uh, they really did an excellent job. Uh, so we had a really great uh, kind of debrief on that last week. And it was really great to hear the, the ELA teachers uh, share how far they've come. Uh, looking forward to next year, that work will continue for uh, the elementary school teachers and their focus will be mainly on writing next year. At TMS, um, we implemented a full scale, uh, implement, implemented full scale, uh, illust I'm trouble speaking, uh, illustrative math program in grades six, seven, and eight with really um, comprehensive professional development and coaching along with uh, that from Lesley University. Uh, so that was great, and it's great to hear uh, their input now saying that they feel really comfortable moving into next year. Um, moving into next year, um, Keys to Literacy, which has done extensive professional development at the elementary school and touched in sixth grade this year, will be moving into grades six through eight. Uh, and they'll be making adjustments to the illustrative math program as needed in the second year. At the high school, you heard uh, several times about the establishment of Winblock which was really successful, so a uh, great job by Mrs. Trainer, who really headed that up, and Mr. Ogden. Uh, <clears throat> and next year, they too, along with the middle school, will be implementing Keys to Literacy Professional Development, grades 9 through 12, uh, in addition to implementing a new curriculum for grade 9 as the middle school shifted to illustrative math. That's now going to cause a cascading effect, grade 9, then 10, then 11, uh, at the high school and so they're prepared to do that uh, and formalize a common planning time so with this is really you may not think that this is a big deal but being a high school principal for 10 years I can tell you it is in working with a lot of high schools they've established through the wind block an opportunity to give our departments common planning time once a week usually departments get to meet maybe once or maybe twice a month uh, so to have that once a week time, that's going to give our departments a lot of time to focus on upkeep of things like making sure that our curriculum is updated and implemented in our curriculum mass, but outside of that just having conversations about teaching and learning and being able to do things within the school day that they would normally probably not get to or we might have to pay extra for just to get things done. So um, that's a really nice thing to have. And so formalizing that and making sure that it's an effective and efficient process is really uh, of key importance. So that'll be a, a key focus for high school next year, among many other things. So that's a really short version of all the things that are going on. But if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I hear no questions. All right. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. This is new business, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, so about a month ago, Chief Hall contacted me and let me know that uh, Officer Bonzar was got a promotion, I guess, was going to a different department for her choice. I think she had a desire to be a detective or something like that. So she is 
moving in, uh, moving within the Tingsboro Police Department. She'll still be part of the community. She'll still be active. Um, and she'll be around the schools a little bit, but I, I do want to thank the chief and the deputy chief for making a commitment of replacing her and making sure that we did have a full-time SRO dedicated to the Tingsboro Public Schools. So Chief Hall, Deputy Chief Woods, and myself interviewed a few internal uh, police candidates from the Tingsboro Police Department, and it was a very difficult decision, all outstanding candidates, uh, but we did make the decision that uh, Officer Chris Gustafson will be our new school resource officer. So Officer Gustafson has been around the, the building uh, frequently. He subbed a lot when Bethany was out at trainings. Um, he's familiar with the, with the kids, the community. He's a coach in the community. His kids go to the school in the community. Um, so uh, he's, been, he's been very visible, and uh, we're thrilled to, to welcome Officer Gustafson to the uh, Tingsboro Public Schools as our, as our SRO. Question, Dr. Flanagan. Mm -hmm. I know a couple of years ago when Officer Bonzer came on, we still had Saturday Manning and he was gonna focus on some of the other schools out of district. Mm -hmm. um, so we had two SROs at the time. Do we, are we down to only one? No, there are at least two, maybe three now at Greater Little Tech. Part of uh, Officer Bonshaw's job will be picking up the other schools so that we, Officer Gustafson can be dedicated completely to the things about public schools. A lot of time, uh, Officer Bonshaw was pulled to go to Innovation Notre Dame. Um, so now that she'll be floating in between the town and those schools, Officer Gustafson will be our consistent point person for all three schools. Thank you. All That's right. what I have for new business. Thank you. Finance, Mr. Messina. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so tonight, 11 bill warrants were presented to the committee. I do have them all back approved. As always in your drive is the list of warrant numbers, accounts, and amounts. Uh, no payroll tonight. Uh, we'll do that, a host of them, at your August 1st meeting. And just one other thing, if I could, similar to the negotiation subcommittee, um, we won't have new single signers of bills until August 1st. So if Mr. Mullen is willing, I would ask that he re remain the single signer through the summer. So we can keep business going. Absolutely. Do we need to vote on that? No. no I, I don't think any of the subcommittees will really take action until the beginning of the school year. Yeah. Okay. That's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. School committee discussion. Nothing at this time. All right. I'm all set. Thank you. I'm all set. I'm good. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate <laughs> our new chair and new <laughs> vice chair. Thank you. That's it. I'm all set. Thank you. This is our last meeting until August 1st. Yes. Well, I would like to wish everyone, our administrators, our students, our staff, a wonderful summer. Uh, and thank you for all of your hard work. And that's all I have. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for placing their confidence in me to be vice chair this coming year. I'm looking forward to it. Um, everybody just have a safe and happy, fun summer. Congratulations, class of 23 from Tingsboro. Also, congratulations to our students who attended other schools and are graduating this time of year. Um, I want to thank Becky for our two great years of leadership in this committee. Um, you did a wonderful job. Um, good luck, Tony and Danielle, in your new roles. I have complete faith you guys will do just as well. Um, thank you to Officer Bonzar. I know she's been with us for a few years. Um, she had her dog, which is a big hit with the kids. So, you know, we'll miss her and we'll miss the dog. And you know. Welcome, Officer Gustafson. I'm sure it'll be a great transition. Thank you. That's fine. So thank you for your leadership the past couple of years. Really appreciate it. Um, phenomenal job. Thank you. Class 2023, great job. Congratulations. Second graders did a phenomenal job today uh, at their little Aesop Fable performance. That was exciting. It was great. Um, you talk about wishing everyone a great summer. I don't think anyone deserves it more than our teachers. Uh, they, they, they had a phenomenal year this year. They rebounded. They've done a fantastic job. I know if the administrators are watching right now, they're saying, what about us? You did a great job. <laughs> but it's the boots on the ground in the classroom that, that make the most impact in this district, uh, and there's, there's no denying that. So, so thank you to our teachers and all our staff for, for their incredibly hard work this year. Uh, it was a good, very good school year, and we're going we're gonna to capitalize on that and build on it for next year. So. That's all we have. Um, welcome, Barry, to your first meeting. You did a great job, kid. You did. We look forward to working with you for the next year. Um, 
Big thank you to Rebecca. In my 11 years, those were probably the two hardest. Um, so thank you. you. Did a great job. Um, Danielle, welcome. Thank you. Uh, to Mr. Ogden and our maintenance staff who pulled off a five hour graduation move um, from outside to inside. Great job. Air conditioning worked beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, and I missed the band. I, guess I missed the band. But uh, that is all I have. We do have a need for executive session this evening. And unfortunately, I closed my screen. So, no, I got it. Hold on. Uh, I have to read our executive session notes here. Can read it, Mr. Chair, if you'd like. No, I got it right okay. there. It is to discuss the strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body as declared by the chair. We will return from executive session only to adjourn the regular schedule, regular session meeting. I am seeking a motion to enter into executive session and remind you that a roll call is required. So moved. Second. Roll call. In favor? In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. We are now in executive session. Thank you and good night.